All right, got my 2008 RZR 800, and I am posting this video to try and help some people who are like me, wanting to snorkel their unit and wanting to make sure that it's watertight the first time, not having to redo it over and over and not having to go crazy with RTV, sealing up every little crack and nook, basically making it impossible to ever tear it apart and put it back together again without possibly damaging things or having to buy a whole bunch of parts. I'll kind of explain that more as I go along. Sorry if this video gets long, but I feel like this is much needed. I haven't seen much online that gave me confidence in sealing this thing up properly. And that may just be this 2008. Maybe the 9 and above has some much needed improvements. But as you can see, got everything torn apart, starting my snorkel kit. Uh, so, I've read a lot about people putting these clutch belt covers back together and they still leak. They do it again and again and finally they get frustrated and they just put so much of some kind of silicone sealant on here that, you know, you're basically, like I said, making it impossible to tear it apart or even, you know, reuse the parts after uh, more than just once. So, anyhow, this right here is the belt box back plate. And that's the inside of it. It will sit against your engine like this. Got three screws on each side. Well, the problem everybody's having, it seems, is the backside leaks. So, how do you take care of that? Well, I talked to Polaris, and in the shop manual, it says for the engine side, use blue RTV. At least on the manual it says RTV. Uh, Polaris told me blue RTV is what's preferred. And if you've ever had this cover off, you've seen blue RTV all around here. Maybe not even a good job. Most of what I hear online is it's a terrible job. So, I used a citrus cleaner, sat in front of the uh, TV for about 30 minutes, uh, scratching, picking at it with different tools and picks, trying not to score up the plastic, but eventually getting it all out of there, as you can see, real clean. Um, used a citrus cleaner, worked great. Well, that's not the hard part. You know, laying a fat bead of blue RTV all around here is gonna get the job done. But this side, I'm not very confident with. Um, some people, are putting gobs and gobs of the right stuff or other kind of sealants on here. But the problem with that is this side actually lines up with a bearing. I'm not sure how this is going to turn out. It's kind of getting late. But this bearing seal is interesting in the idea that it has an outer part that's blue, inner part that's black. It's got a couple lips. And all that is supposed to basically line up with this inner ring and hold all the water out. Well, this is 2017 now. I'm not confident that that's fitting very tight. I fit this thing up by hand and it feels like it's got a little wiggle room. So, what I've done is I've taken a little bit of a few spare O-rings that I had laying around. I cut out a section of it, used some super glue, and made myself an o-ring. Now if you can see this clear enough, the o-ring is actually riding on the outer edge of this uh, inner lip, the outer edge. So it's fitting as tight as it can against the outer edge without being stretched or pressed in any way. Now when I line this up with that blue seal I just showed you, it fits perfect up against there. Now, I don't want to put blue RTV in here or the right stuff or any other kind of sealant because I'll never get it off. Removing this from the engine side is not bad. It actually on mine, it did not stick to the engine at all. The blue RTV actually only sits in here. And I'm not sure if that's because the engine side is very thin. As you can see right here, it's a very thin 
wall that will actually press against that blue RTV. So, everybody's doing that. Polaris is doing that. I'm confident that's the right way to seal it up. Again, this side I've used an O-ring, homemade O-ring. I haven't measured this, but I'm sure if you measured this precisely, you could order a pre-made O-ring. Um, I would suggest the thinner the better. Uh, I'm not sure what my size is, so sorry if you guys in the comments. Um, maybe I'll get a caliper or measure it one day. Anyhow, I uh, apologize if the video gets long, but next part of this. So, okay, I'll put a B to blue. I've got my O-ring. Now, if some of you guys have taken this apart, you can see there's three screw holes on each side. Well, for this side, comes with three screws with a rubber, a washer with a rubber washer on it. And that's actually going to do a perfect job in pressing that opposite side to seal out the water. Now mine looked like crap, so if yours do too, forget Polaris, go to Home Depot, bonded sealing washers, quarter inch, four pack was like, I think 88 cents. So right here, quarter inch, four pack of bonded sealing washers at Home Depot. You just unscrew the old ones off of here, screw on the new ones, you're gonna have a great seal for each of those screw holes. Make yourself an O-ring. You're gonna have a great seal for that side. All of this is removable and reusable. Like I said, the blue sticks onto this primarily and not your engine. So this whole thing ends up becoming reusable in the idea that you have to, I don't know, do some kind of service or in my case with the 08, the snorkel pipes here are really hard to get to with any tool. So if you ever had to take that off to say, get at your throttle body to do like a throttle cable adjustment, something like that, you know, that rear belt box cover is gonna really, it's gonna make things a lot easier if you remove that. All right, so, you got your blue RTV, right? You want this to set well. If you've pulled one of these off or ever had trouble with this, the idea is you can lay a big fat bead around here, but once you press it against the engine, it's gonna flatten out to you know, less than a millimeter, uh, especially if you torque it on right away. So I just kept thinking, how do I come up with a better plan to seat this on smooth and effectively? Well, what I did was I went back to Home Depot my hundred trips getting all my snorkel pipes and I will put a video later about uh, how I made my snorkels there's a guy on here on YouTube who made a great video for uh, RZR 800 how to make your own snorkels however it doesn't work for the 08 uh, it's close but doesn't match up properly so anyway um, I'll do that later keep a lookout for it if you want so what I did is I went to Home Depot, I got two dowel rods. One is a quarter inch and one is three sixteenths of an inch. So what I did was I cut little pieces because again, I wanted to put this back cover, belt box cover on smooth and precise so that my blue RTV didn't smash on one side and stay fat on the other or pinch through and then ruin the seal so it, it never keeps out water. So this took maybe a few minutes, but I cut uh, three pieces off of each one, sanded them down a bit, filed down the edges, and literally screwed them in. So these now are screwed in. Give me a second. So once I got my blue RTV on, what I'll be able to do bear with me is basically put this rear cover plate on very slowly I can put it on at my own pace slide it back until it just touches that way once it's touched I'll press it in just a tiny bit come back in maybe an hour press it in just a little bit more 
get it pretty close to snug, but not. I won't snug up those bolts or those screws until 24 hours. Once that sets for 24 hours, that stuff's done setting, then I'll do my final torquing of those screws or those bolts so that I can ensure that I have a good seal. I don't want to screw this thing up. It took forever to seal, to remove the blue RTV off the back of this plate that Polaris put there. I don't want to have to do that again. You can see I've got this thing prepped nice and clean. I mean, if you're like me, you've looked online, you've seen guys, you know, put more blue RTV on the back of this thing, on top of RTV, silicone on top of silicone, siliconing all up in here. You know, if you silicone up in here, that's going to press into this seal. And just imagine what's going to happen to that. When you pull this thing off, you're not going to be able to get that seal, that sealant, that RTV out of there. And if you do, you're going to damage the heck out of that, um, <laughs> that seal. To me, it didn't make sense. You know, Polaris didn't seem to build these things to be watertight. So I'm trying to come up with a way to make it watertight and put it on right the first time. So again, sorry if this is a long video, but if you're following me here, guys, I think this is going to be a great way to seal your belt boxes without having to redo it over and over. Do it right the first time. I hope these tips help. You know, once you get this box on, this rear cover on, you've got the front belt box cover. Well, the front belt box cover has that piece of crap Polaris foam gasket. Why they didn't make a nice form-fitted rubber gasket um, or o-ring that can be reusable time after time, I don't know. What I've read online and what I've seen a lot of the custom shops and performance shops do is not put a bunch of silicone in there. They don't fill this edge with silicone or RTV or anything like that. They simply put the gasket in just like the manufacturer made it to do and they just grease the heck out of it just grease you know put the gasket in first and then just just put a ton of grease all over that thing so that the idea is you're gonna give the water um, a barrier so when the water tries to come in through that seal not only will the seal keep it out but that grease will repel it and that's what the pros do who go you know submarine in these things so why do I need to use RTV? I don't. You just need to start with a good new gasket. Now, same thing. Well, how do you get this belt box to go on nice and smooth? Well, one more time. Let's take that dowel rod. Let's go ahead and insert a few of those onto the back plate like I had on the engine there. And if you do that in a few different spots, around that plate, that back plate, you're going to give that front cover uh, a smooth ride on. So when you got that thing nice and greased up, the grease is laid there perfect, well if you start juggling that thing trying to put it on, you're going to have a tough job, you're going to squish some of that grease out of the wrong places, and like a million other people online, you're going to have a leaky box, and you're going to, going to be pissed off because you have to redo it again. Well guys, same thing goes here. You don't want to seal this up with some crazy sealant because you're never going to get it off without having to buy a new belt box cover, um, back plate, or among other parts. Uh, to me, it just sounds crazy. Like I said, hope this helps because this is the best I could come up with and I'm sure it's going to work just fine. It's going to be tested once I put it back together, so you'll see it in the comments if it seals up just fine. The only other thing at least on the 08s that you need to do is put in a drain. The 08s, 9s, 10s, maybe even 11s for some reason did not come with a drain plug. But the later model ones did. Well, how do you take care of that? Well, some guys are putting in a tire valve stem. Other guys are putting in, I think, a Grizzly uh, any model Grizzly that has one of these, it's basically a grommet. You, you basically drill a hole on the primary side 
Now let's see which way I got this thing. Okay, so you you basically drill a hole on the base of the primary side and you pop in that grommet and also that valve that comes on the grizzly. Well, I've seen online guys with grizzlies have those valves fail. So those valves eventually leak. And the idea is you're wanting to seal all this stuff out. Well, what I've come up with, I don't have the grommet here to show you, but I got some half inch inside diameter vinyl tubing. I've got a half inch nipple that basically all, I've got this stuff somewhere else so I don't, can't show it to you, but a half inch grommet, you drill a hole, punch that grommet through so you have a nice rubber grommet seal. Then you have a two-sided half inch nipple that you press through just enough to where it rides flat on the other side. So the nipple is like, I don't know, an inch and a half long, but you don't want that nipple poking up an inch and a half into your belt box. You want it as low as it can get, yet still have a, a barb that's pressed through the grommet. So what I'm gonna do is press it through until one barb goes through, and then just chop off the rest of it so that it's smooth, uh, as low as it can sit inside the belt box cover, yet still have a barb through the grommet so that it has a good seal. Well, if any of you have watched the guy's video about how to make the snorkel kit for this Razor or an RZR 800, he basically uh, put in a valve stem and said it was tough to get to. Another guy in the comments, I think, put maybe you should snake a hose over. So if you're following me, we've got a drilled hole, a grommet, we punch our nipple through, then we can take our hose, put it on the nipple, and heck, I got three feet of hose or something. I'm gonna run this somewhere where it's convenient. You know, if it drops out the bottom, really doesn't matter where you put it, as long as some of it's pointing down, you'll be able to see water inside this hose. So once you see water inside that hose, well, I couldn't find a good valve that was cheap. Um, I mean, less than like five or eight bucks. So I just got this half inch test plug. You know, you'll just stuff this plug in the end of that hose. It needs to be hose clamped. So basically keep a screwdriver in your toolkit and your razor, hose clamp that plug. You know, if, if the water does eventually get into here or for whatever reason you seal it up and it doesn't work right, you've got a plug in here, you unscrew it, pop the plug, it drains all the water out of the belt box, throw it in neutral, rev it up, get the rest of that water out and dry, and you can at least get back to your truck so that you can go home and try to reseal all this garbage again. I don't know why Polaris didn't make these things, I don't know, waterproof, but to me, I guess that guarantees that you're gonna come back, buy another one in five years, or you're gonna break it and you're gonna keep all their mechanics employed. So anyway, long video, sorry, but hope all this information helps some people. I've spent days and hours and countless amount of time on the internet searching for a good solution to this. Hope this works for you. I know it's gonna work for me. All right, guys, y'all have a good one.